Welcome back to the refit and rebuild of this 42 foot catamaran which I found almost sinking in an anchorage about 20 miles from here. Managed to sail it here and so far in the boatyard I've fixed uh, the rudders, some rotten panels. I've been named the next Stockton Rush with my unorthodox window application techniques that was in last week's video this week. Well, you'll see. Enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. It's super tempting to go straight ahead and tackle this ugly rot, which uh, really bad thing about this is I think there's going to be some chain plates around here. But this whole area is going to need replacing. This bulkhead is rotting and everything. And I really want to tackle this now, but I'm going to do the through holes first. It's really tempting now. The mast is off and everything and I can access these areas to carry on, but it's under the water line. It's probably more important. We've got four through holes. I need to clean the inside, sand the inside, back to fiberglass. I'm gonna put a plate on the inside of the hull, a plywood disc covering the hole, and then layers of fiberglass on the outside of the hull. That's how I'm gonna do it. backing plate which is screwed into the hull I think maybe some sort of stringer and where there's some screws there's uh, a little bit of kind of damp plywood I think the technique with this rot is gouge it out and then fill it grinder is such a beastly machine it was kind of getting jammed because it's such a tight area again all these repairs seem to be in really tight areas but yeah I've got like pretty much down to fiberglass now so yeah I need to grind down the hole on the outside as well I have to go quite far around quite deep it's never nice grinding into your hole but it's gonna be so nice having no through holes Job done. We'll try with 60, 60 grit. you can see uh, I can't really get my camera but you can see the concave concave shape I've made I've built that up with circles of fiberglass it is not it's not the thickest layer of fiberglass I think that's why the bung is so important on a thicker fiberglass hull you'd be able to get more of a concave
me using cheap discs. One disc per hole. <laughs> about to get hit by a huge storm. Wah! This one could cause a bit of damage I think in the boat yards around here. So I got a visit from a lovely man named Chris who has got a houseboat here in Amsterdam and recently I found out that I can just drive my dinghy into Amsterdam. Thanks to Chris, he's let me stay at his houseboat this weekend and I am so grateful, it is so nice. So I've come to his house and then now we're gonna take a trip to the houseboat. Here he is. This canal you're on here was the first canal of Amsterdam defending the city. Mm -hmm. This up here was sea, major sea, North Sea. Yeah. Straight out into North Sea. Got a passenger boat. That tower over there on the left is where they did the first money. It's called the Munt. So that's where they created the first coins. And that little oh, tower really? on the left, yeah. It's a little one coming out. Yeah, it's a little one. So this is quite a narrow... Yeah, uh, we're under the main road here. There's another one coming. Small, big, small one. Yeah, but well, I can see it's uh, clear now. That after this is clear. Yeah, we can go. Give it, give it some. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give it some. So well, you're up, you're now on the Amstel River. By Amstelladam. Amsterdam's called Amstelladam because of this river. Uh, this is Freddie Heineken's hotel here. This one here, his hotel. He's Freddie dead Heineken's now. Hotel. Freddie Heineken's hotel on the left. So welcome to arrival number two. This is the best beer in town. This boat was a cargo boat built in 1910. So it was carried coal, wood and stuff like that. All so this would this would be all open. Yeah. And this had a big sail, the mast, the mast came down from here, so it would be on the top and come down and down into here. Yeah. I have pictures but not here, they're at home, but uh, it's it's beautiful classic pictures. And is she, obviously she's steel, made out of steel. Steel hull, yeah. I, it's five millimetres of steel, which I have to have checked every five years. Yeah. Yeah, if it goes less than four or something, they go mad. So in here was the engine room, because the steering. Steer, I've kept all the steering back. Okay. See the steering wheel? So this was, uh, the engine was in here with water tanks and diesel tanks. And two years ago, we just made it beautiful into a bedroom. Wow. It's nice, isn't it? So nice. Beautiful cool. It's, cool. it's, nice it's cool, so isn't? cool. How yeah. is it so cool? I think because yeah. you've got the, the stir hut, they call this the stir hut, the captain's yeah. hut on top. The, the, the sun is hitting this roof, and uh, not, okay. not this, you know what I mean? Also, check out the front bedroom and the, uh, the yeah, wood. So there are other lights, you want it's more beautiful. light, there's two lights in there. Okay. 
It's very sexy, isn't it? <laughs> it's beautiful. It's lovely, isn't it? It's isn't perfect. It? <laughs> That's right, it has perfect. You could stop your round the world cruise just like here. Yeah. When I take this boat, I have to get this boat under that bridge. But how do you motor it with no engine? I have a tug. Tug comes okay. constantly. Yeah. But I have to take all of this off. All this comes off in pieces. Does it? It's like That's a jigsaw yeah. puzzle. This is amazing. This is just the break that I needed. I'll come back stronger. What a place. What a spot. What a weekend that was. That was so good. Spent some nice time with friends. Spent some really good alone time. A lot of time for reflection. Prior to that weekend, a lot of people were telling me, Mark, you need to take a break. You need to take a rest. And I was always saying, no, 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 no. I, I need to, I need to crack on. Definitely needed that little break. So thank you so much, Chris. Really, really appreciate that. Like that was such a lovely weekend. The peace the tranquility and what a lovely boat and an absolute privilege to spend three nights there. Now I need to crack on with the through holes. I had a problem with my pumps for my epoxy. However, I just bought some new pumps. So, I will paint everything with epoxy and then I'll start gluing and putting in my circular discs of fiberglass. Hardener pump is kaput. Oh, oh, it's working now. Anyway, I don't trust it. Uh. Alright, so I have four backing plates, epoxied and sanded five circles, because one's a double. So I'll glue those together. I'm actually going to start just gluing the backing plates on. Glue the backing plate on first, put some weight on it, on this side, and then put the circle in, and then layers of fiberglass over. Super simple. So all the surfaces have been pre-coated with epoxy. I uh, got a lot of comments because uh, I in one of the clips I didn't pre-coat the surfaces. I think it was when filling the rudders. So pre-coated everything, sanded everything down and also no wooden stick for spreading. Got a little, well a lot of people saying a butter knife. This is going to be much better I think. I'm not sure what you call it, but there you go. Mm. 
Okay, so I need more weight on it. Definitely struggling to film everything, especially in these tight corners. So yeah, not much filming. Put all the backing plates in. Been trying to weigh them down as much as possible, but it's difficult to find the right amount of weight. I could have screwed it in, but uh, getting a screwdriver in there is quite difficult. <laughs> My friend Sil came down today and together we're gonna close up these holes once and for all. Everything's prepared, degreased, sanded, the plugs are all ready. Should be a pretty solid job, I think. <laughs> nice try though. <laughs> Do it! What a doer does! Oh, 
going? Where we going, boss? So on initial inspection, the beam troughs on the first beam look super good. The beams also look really good. Do a little pokey test, check around, but yeah, all looks good. So these beam troughs have little drainage holes and yeah, they seem to have worked on this one. Gonna get lifted out, Sil? Yes. Looking Hopefully. forward to it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite nervous to see what uh, what we'll find underneath. This is my little uh, my little holiday uh, sailing boat. Yeah. Left my mothership at home, but this sailboat I actually bought as a as a way to get from my big boat to the shore. That was the initial plan because it was only 500 euros. So I bought it also because I knew it would be easy to sail, to be re-rigged to sail, and um, I kind of fell in love in it during yeah. the process. Because you, uh, you realize how little you need, and so you that's <laughs> the most fun. Because the smaller the boat is, the easier you're going to take it. And uh, and you've not lifted her. No, so I bought it from uh, these owners that had uh, also never actually seen the bottom, because uh, they they had gotten it some sketchy way, uh, some type type of payment, and uh, so they had it for three years, not out of the water. Uh, I've had it now for almost a year, like three quarters of a year. And, uh, and who knows how long it's been yeah. in the water before. But I've checked it while swimming before. Yeah. And from the inside, it's all pretty hard. I knew that before I bought it. So the yard is run by a father and son. It's a family business. It's what makes this place unique. Mixing up some fairing compound now, so the super super light, micro light, and then uh, I'll just go over it with a proper spatula, sand it down later, and then the holes will be covered, and it just needs priming and painting.
changing my spatula. bottom some soft spots are we looking at right here delamination of the plywood but um I peeled it off till here and it was dry so yeah it's not completely soaked what are you gonna do with this uh, I might chop it off and uh because on the other side here is real really bad looking yeah chop this out whatever is like soft of Whatever, whatever is yeah. really crucial, I'll chop it out. So I'm gonna keep tabs on Sil's progress, and he's also gonna help me with the beam because I found a lot, a lot of rot in the beam. So check out Sil's YouTube channel. I've been really encouraging him to start because he has a really good story and uh, he has a lot of really good skills as well. He's uh, got some good carpentry skills. He's been helping me with my rotten beam. It's very rotten. There's a shot of it being very rotten. Thank you so, so much to you guys who went to my PayPal coffee, supported me in that way. Thanks just for watching, thanks for commenting, thanks for liking. You guys, you make my life so much easier getting tools, getting materials, so thank you so, so much. Next week, ah, a lot of rot, a lot of rot. <laughs>